guys, it's Serena here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about how to care for bell frogs, as in southern bell frogs and the green and golden bell frogs. So these frogs are native to Australia but also were introduced to New Zealand. Before I first got my bell frogs, which was a year ago, while I was doing a lot of research about them beforehand, I found it really difficult to find a lot of information about them, especially YouTube videos. I don't think there's like any care guides about them on YouTube. Since these frogs are only in Australia and New Zealand, they aren't really popular as other frogs. Since I've had them for such a long time now and I have a lot of experience, I wanted to make this video to help those people who might also be in the situation I was in where I couldn't find much videos about them. Basically, this is my frog enclosure. I have four frogs in here. I have three southern bell frogs, which are the ones that I've had since last year, as well as one green and golden bell frog. Now, I only got the green and golden bell frog recently from someone who couldn't keep them anymore. But if you don't know, there are a bit of differences to the southern bell frog and the green and golden bell frog, but not too much. I'm just going to call the green and golden bell frog G&Gs because that's easier. So the G&Gs tend to be a bit more bright in colour, I've noticed. The green is a lot bright and they have a lot more gold on them. Whereas the southern bell frogs are kind of a bit more spotty. They tend to be a bit darker too. They're quite lumpy and they also will always have a green stripe down their back. The southern bell frog are actually the largest frog we have in New Zealand. My southern bell frogs are only a year old so they're not too big at the moment. I was told my G&G frog is four to five years old. So for terrarium or tank sizes, I am using a fish tank. But I do have a mesh lid on top, which I'm holding down with these clips, which might not be the safest thing. I have had some escape before, but that was a while ago when I had a gap in the lid. With the lid on, I haven't had any escape recently. If you do want a more secure lid, it's probably best to get a like wooden frame. I believe this tank is a 70 litre tank. I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% sure. Which I personally think is a pretty good size for now, but some bell frogs do get quite large when they're older. Eventually, once they do start to get bigger, I will get a bigger enclosure for them. But they seem to be doing really well in this tank so far. Now, of course, they do need a water source. They do like to bathe, I've noticed. They like to just chill in the water, especially since it's summer currently in New Zealand and Australia. So I usually just have like a container of water in here and mostly just land. But I noticed since it's a lot hotter now, they like to spend a lot of time in the water. So I made a lot bigger of a water area and I also have a filter in here now so I don't have to change the water too often. I do a water change about once a week which I do recommend you get a filter if you have quite a large water area like I do but if you have just a container of water in there and you're changing the water every day or every second day you probably won't need a filter. Just know that since they're amphibians their skin is very sensitive so you can also make sure you want to dechlorinate the water before putting it into the tank because there is chlorine in the water in most parts of New Zealand. I'm not sure about Australia but I say it'll probably be about the same case. So definitely dechlorinate your water because without dechlorinating the water they can absorb the chlorine into their skin which is very bad for them and cause them to die. The dechlorinator that I use is Prime. I use this for my fish tanks too. I've had no problems with it. Some people have different opinions about what the best dechlorinator is for amphibians. I've heard that stress coat can actually be really bad for amphibians so I don't recommend you use that. Some people have actually said Prime is bad for them too but I'm not really sure. From my research I found that Prime is the best one to use but some people might have different opinions on that. The substrate as you can see for the water area, I have gravel at the bottom, and for my land area, I have moss. You should avoid using small gravel in the land area because there have been times where people's frogs have actually eaten the gravel by accident. So I recommend you use something with moss or organic soil. I use moss because I find soil just gets absolutely everywhere. It's stuck to them and then they'll bring it into the water and it's just a big mess. So I use this spag moss. You can buy this from like hardware stores in the garden area. Um, and I have had no problems with using this stuff. This stuff is from Mida 10 in New Zealand. You probably find it at Bunnings too. I've seen heaps of frog keepers use the same stuff and no problems with it. It seems to be completely safe for amphibians and other animals. You're gonna want to have a lot of hidey places and some plants, real plants or fake plants. I personally like the look of real plants a lot more. Although the plants I have in here currently, which is a maiden here, seems to not be doing so well because it's right under the UVB light so it's kind of a bit too much light for it so I'll probably move the UVB light or move the plant or get a different plant that's better with light at some point. Yeah but you don't have to have real plants I just think they look a lot nicer to me personally. You also should probably have some like things that you can climb on like I have some driftwood and branches and stuff in here that they like to climb on. Most of the time I find they just like to sit on top of the driftwood and sit under the UVB light. So UVB light is another one of those kind of opinionated things. Some people say you don't need it, some people say you do. Personally, I think for these types of frogs, you should get one. Unless, of course, you have them outside, then that's fine. They'll get the sunlight in there and stuff, so that's good. But if you have them inside, like I do, 
I highly recommend you do get a UVB light. What I use is the um, Riptile 1 one, I think it's 25 watts UVB light. They can be a bit expensive, but this one has lasted me about a year so far. The lamp I'm using is just a cheap $10 lamp. Um, the UVB bulb is just a screw-in bulb, so that's pretty easy. So yeah, I do highly recommend you get a UVB bulb. Without one, they could potentially develop a metabolic bone disease later on in the future. It's very common in amphibians and reptiles that don't have a UVB bulb. When I first got my frogs I didn't actually have one because I didn't know it was necessary until I started joining some um, New Zealand frog Facebook groups and everyone recommended I got one. So I got one and I noticed straight away they were much happier with it. They started coming out of their hides and sitting under the bulb. Now for food, I recommend you get quite a variety of different foods for them. I feed mine mealworms, soldier fly larvae, mealworm beetles sometimes, flies, moths, and sometimes other things that I might find that's safe for them. Earthworms are very good for them, but I have a hard time finding earthworms. So I'd recommend that you start your own like mealworm colony. This is my one. I have quite a lot of beetles in here at the moment. Most of them are hiding there. And they breed really well, especially since it's summer at the moment, so I don't have to buy my own mealworms anymore, which is really helpful. Or also um, slaters or isopods or whatever you call them. I was used to breed them too, but unfortunately my colony just kind of died. I don't really know what happened. I think maybe it got too hot for them, but I hope to breed them again too. They also really help with just keeping a few of them in the tank because they also won't eat a bit of like old waste and fungus or mold growing in the tank that you might not be able to see. If you get ice pods, which I recommend because they're very high in calcium, sprinkle a few of them in the tank. That'll help eat some of the waste and stuff, but you still got to do like cleaning I, I do like a big clean every month or so, but also spot cleaning, like whenever you see some poop or old uneaten like food that might have died or something, because I will only usually eat food if it is alive and moving. Just take it out, you don't want to have all that old stuff in there, it's not very good for them. I find that I absolutely love it when I put some like flies and moths in there, they chase them around and go hunting for them and it's really fun to watch them all coming out. I also would highly recommend you get some calcium powder to put on their food. This like reptile calcium powder is safe for them and just kind of like sprinkle it onto like their mealworms or whatever you're feeding them or put a little bit in a bag and shake them around a bit. Oh yeah, crickets are another food I feed them sometimes but not very often because I find they don't tend to catch the crickets and then they end up drowning in the water or something so but yeah they really need some calcium in their diet so definitely get some of this I use this like every second day I think but some people use it every day some people use it like once a week it really you know as long as you're using it like at least a couple times a week then that will be good also if you have a hard time finding um, different kind of insects here because most pet stores in New Zealand I only have like mealworms and flies. I recommend you have a look on Trade Me, which is um, those who aren't Kiwi, it's a basically a New Zealand eBay. And there's heaps of people who breed like soldier fly larvae and I suppose on there and mealworms. That's where I buy all of my food for them because it's so much cheaper than buying them in store. Um, handling them, like most frogs, you shouldn't really handle them as much as possible. Like I said, their skin is really sensitive, so if you are going to handle them, Make sure you wash your hands very thoroughly under water with no soap. Don't use soap, that will burn them. Just make sure your hands are moist with fresh clean water. Sometimes I handle mine, but I do try to avoid as much as possible because they don't really enjoy it. <laughs> I notice my D&D frog doesn't mind me holding her as much um, as my Southern Bell frog. I'm not really sure why, maybe just because she's quite a lot older than them. You just pooped on me, yay! But yeah, don't handle them too much. Not really the kind of animals you can hold and cuddle with, you know, you mainly just watch them. Now the main way to tell a gender of both of these species is just if they croak or not. Males will croak, females won't. But here's an example of my male, and if I pick him up, he will probably croak. Don't worry, I'm not hurting him or anything. I'm not even holding him tight. I'm just gently holding him in my hand. But this may or may not make them croak. Uh, it also depends on their age too. Mine didn't croak at all until this summer. Some bell frogs do actually get bigger than the GNGs but they do take quite a long time to grow. My southern bell frogs are only a little bit over a year old. Even though they're all the same age, they are kind of different sizes, which you do need to be a bit careful about because sometimes they can eat each other if one is smaller than the other. But I haven't experienced that at all and I haven't experienced them trying to eat each other or anything, even though one of them is quite a lot smaller than the others. And although my D&D frog is four to five years old, she actually is pretty much the same size as my biggest southern bell frog. And she hasn't tried eating my small a southern bell frog either. So maybe for 
frogs eating each other isn't as common as we think. Or maybe I just got lucky. But yeah, um, I think that's most things I wanted to say. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm happy to answer anything. Or if there's something that I've missed, feel free to comment it down below for those people who are looking for more information about them. Um, yeah, I also would recommend you join some New Zealand frog groups and ask some questions on there. There's heaps of people who will be willing to help you. I'm also in a few of them, so you, I might even reply to you. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!